Joyce, there are so many people who are um, experiencing long-term difficult sickness and illness right. in their life. And so today in our conversation, we want to talk about um, things that might encourage them and yeah. any suggestions that we can have as they walk through that really difficult time. Right. You've had different things. You, you've dealt with cancer. Mm -hmm. um, you've dealt with the long-term uh, time of forced rest because right. of severe illness. So what are some of the things that you learned through those times? Well, first of all, it's not easy to be sick and feel bad because nobody else really knows how you feel. So sometimes you feel very alone. Mm. In I never your pain. considered that. Yeah. I mean, even people that love you. Now, of course, if somebody has experienced a lot or enough sickness in their own life, then they're able to have a little more empathy. But, um, I found that a lot of times I felt alone, mm -hmm. you know, that nobody but God really yeah. understood. And it is difficult to not give up or get depressed and discouraged because, uh, I mean, sickness is difficult if it's three days or if it's three years. Mm -hmm. uh, when, you, when you feel bad, I mean, even if you have a headache, it's like, you just kind of feel bad all over. You know? Yeah. Our body is put together in such a way, if your little finger hurts, your whole body hurts. Yeah, that's true. And your attention is drawn to the part that hurts. Yes. And so, for example, for 10 years, I had migraine headaches. Now, I only had them once a month because it was related to my cycle. But, um, man, they hurt. Mm. And I would, I would work and preach while I had them, but I was very prone to having headaches, and and that was hard. You know, you say to somebody, I've got a headache, and it's like, oh, that's too bad, and you know, they're going about yeah. their business. And, you know, of course, when I had cancer, I had breast cancer and had to have a mastectomy, and that was hard, but the prognosis was good, so that made it easier. They got it all, and I didn't have to take any chemo. I didn't have to take any radiation. Um, because it had not gotten to my lymph nodes. But I still had to deal with all the trauma of mm -hmm. losing the breast and, you know, dealing with that. I did have a replacement surgery, and even that was challenging. And, uh, of course, once you've had cancer, there's always that thing in the back of your mind, is it going to come back somewhere else? No. I've had, I think, over 30 years now of getting clear mammograms every year and so I'm not afraid of that but in addition to that I've had two hip replacements and uh, uh, it's amazing what all God can enable you to do if you just won't give up mm -hmm. I mean it really amazes me that I've continued to work through everything mm -hmm. I haven't I mean I think I've only missed like one conference in all the years that I've been doing this, which is 45 years. Which, which is incredible. In, in itself is yeah. a miracle. That That's God, a God thing. Yeah. You have to really know that God loves you. Because when you, when you keep having issues over and over, and that's kind of been my Achilles heel. You know, it's like for some people it's finances, for some it's trouble in their marriage. But when you go into ministry, the devil is not going to leave you alone. Yeah. I mean, you become a target. And, you know, we reach a lot of people with the word because of the big, broad TV ministry we have. And so that's kind of the thing that the enemy will come at me with. Mm -hmm. And um, three years ago, I got pretty serious adrenal fatigue just from working too hard and not using wisdom. And that was really hard on me because it affected my voice. I got my... I don't know why, but my mouth got extremely dry, and I had some silly thing called burning tongue syndrome, which most doctors had never even heard of. And, you know, sometimes when you have things that nobody can find, then they, oh, they start that's thinking... That's so difficult. They start thinking it's all in your head. Yeah. And um, but, the, but the key is, is to never give up. And one of the things that I say, I've learned to say, is this: there will be an end to this. 
And in each thing that I've had, mm-hmm. you know, there always is an end. Yeah. You know, this this won't last forever. There will be an end to this. And I, I say it out loud, you know, because that's one of the things the enemy wants to tell you or frighten you with. Well, yeah. what if I'm like this forever? I'll always be this way. Well, yeah. what if this never goes away? Yeah. I can't stand this if, if this never goes away. And I know when you're sick, the inclination is to huddle up in a corner somewhere by yourself and do nothing. But really, unless you have something that just totally keeps you from doing anything, you're so much better off if you do things, if you go ahead and do things because, number one— Stay as busy as you can? Well, within reason, based on what's wrong with you. Right, right. But it's getting your mind off of it. Let's just Mm. say, for example, this is kind of a— simple example, but have you ever felt really bad and gone shopping and noticed while you were out shopping that all of a sudden you didn't feel bad anymore? Oh, yeah, or anything that distracts you for a while. <laughs> right. So yeah. it, it, stay faithful to God, yeah. you know. Keep going to church. Keep, you know, continue to pray. Continue to read your Bible. Try to Try to do as many normal things as you possibly can do. And don't give up and think that you're never going to be healed. I, I want to ask you to unpack a little bit what you said about knowing that God loves you, because I think that's really important. When, when I've had some physical things going on, sometimes the first thing that pops into your head, which mm-hmm. is definitely the enemy, is saying, well, God could fix this if he wanted to. Yeah. And instead, having that awareness that God still loves me even in this situation? Yeah, I I think it's just something that you have to get so deeply rooted in the love of God mm-hmm. and know that God's not the one making you sick. Yeah. And yes, he could heal you. If he's going to do it 10 years from now, why not now? And to be honest, I don't know the answers to all those things, and I don't think anybody else does. But Romans 8 tells us that nothing should separate us from the love of God, which is found in Christ Jesus. And that's exactly what the devil's trying to do. Yeah. He's trying to get you to think that God is not good and that, you know, and, and also like, well, why did this happen to me? Mm-hmm. You know, I hear I am preaching the word and trying to help people all the time and, you know, I'm, I'm generous, and why did this happen to me? And you have to really be careful about that, too. But it's, it gets into the area of indig- indignation. And I remember one man told me, and this is so powerful when you think about it, his son got cancer, and, of course, everybody was praying for him to live, and he didn't. He died. And the man said to God, where were you when my son died? And the thing that came back to him was the same place I was when mine died. Mm. And so we have to stop trying to figure out things that are beyond our ability to understand. We just don't understand. But God does restore things. He does take what Satan meant for harm and works it out for good. And I believe, for example, like the the fact that I had migraine headaches for 10 years and got over them, don't have them anymore, that's that's encouraging to people Mm -hmm. that have headaches. Definitely. The fact that I had cancer and got through it and it's never come back. You know, that's encouraging to people. Yeah. And uh, hopefully the fact that I worked myself almost to death is teaching people, Mm. you know, that you have to obey God's laws of health and that you can't just push, 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 push. You've got to use common sense. We have to take care of ourselves. I mean, God God gives us wisdom to take care of ourselves. And yet let's flip it over in this while we're being candid. Um, at the same time, things happen, like you said, that we don't understand, that we can't explain. Right. It doesn't mean that your faith was weak. No. I mean, there are so many things that, that can come up in the Christian world. There's so many reasons. I mean, it, sure, sometimes you get sick because you weren't taking care of yourself. There may be a time when there's sin in your life and the enemy gets in through that door. But... That's not always the case. Right. You know, there was a little boy in the Bible that was blind, and everybody wanted to know why, 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 why. And and God said, you know, this is not unto death. It's 
that God would get glory. Mm -hmm. And I think that God gets glory out of the fact now that he's healed me from so many things. And I really, you know, right now, you know, I'm doing some teaching on the gifts of the Spirit, one of them being healing, one of them being miracles. And it has charged my faith up again to just really believe God for miracles. You know, it doesn't cost anything to believe. Yeah. And I, I want people to remember that. Yeah. It doesn't cost anything to believe. And you say, well, what if I believe and nothing happens? Well, what if you believe and something does happen? Yeah. And I've come to believe that, you know, first of all, believing makes you happy. Joy and peace are found in believing, the Bible says. And so even if I believe my whole life and I turn out to never get what I believe for, at least I'm going to be happy. I'm not going to be miserable and down in the dumps. Another thing that I recommend is take life one day at a time and expect God to do something great in your life. Now, get the medical help you need, but be wise about that. Pray first. Go to God for healing and make sure that you go where you feel like he's sending you and not just mm -hmm. anywhere and everywhere and taking everybody's advice and uh this too will pass. What Satan meant for harm, God will work out for good. All things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. God always gives us the victory in Christ Jesus. You have to meditate on the scriptures that are going to keep you strong. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, it, it's such a difficult thing, and there are many people who are really suffering right, right. now. And to know that God is in the midst of even that suffering yeah. and loving them and that healing is always a possibility makes such a difference. And in case anybody wonders today, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. 